Hello, everybody, and welcome to Todd and Shane's Cloudy Podcast, number 444, recorded live October 30th, 2019. 444, four, four. I feel like we should have said something we should have. We that. should have planned for that and done something important. Maybe we'll do 444 four, four, part two next week. Well, I'll be, yeah, I'll be gone next week, and I'll be gone the week after that. So uh, in December, when we do the next episode, <laughs> it'll be 444 four, four and a fourth or something. We can... Ooh, I like it. 44 and 4, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, and I, and I don't want to toot my own horn too much. No, that's that's not true. I do want to toot my own horn. <laughs> we are all caught up on production. So the people who heard last week's the uh, last week's podcast was out before this week's pod, like, like two days ago. I, I'm sorry. Can you step back? I don't really understand. I, I blacked out for a minute. I think I had a seizure. Can... Yeah. It's uh, it is as unlikely as it sounds, but yeah, I'm I'm all kind of I did like uh, seven or eight of them in uh, in a week. Yeah, well, folks, them out. just stop and just give Todd a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I refined some of my processes and you know automated a little bit. And uh, we, before the show, Shane and I were talking. I've been busy with a couple of different customer things over the summer, which kind of exacerbated me getting behind. Those have wrapped up. And, uh, yeah, I had uh, had some time, got caught up, kind of got in a flow, got in a rhythm. I do a lot of it with PowerShell, not enough. Honestly, there's a couple of pieces that I need to fix in PowerShell. But I just had a PowerShell window, and there's, like, eight different PowerShell commands that I run, and I would get done with one, and I would just start hitting the up arrow. <laughs> New podcast, do this. And mostly got it done. Man. So then now, you know, you wonder, you know, when are you going to write the scripts? You just feed it the file and it just runs all the pieces all at once. So, yeah. Uh, so I, and I've talked to Jeff a little bit about this and I, I think my questions, my PowerShell questions for Jeff are so incredibly stupid that he can't wrap his head around the question without, you know, before even giving me the answer. But there are two pieces that I can't script. Well, one of them could be scripted by somebody smarter than me. Another one, maybe not. Uh, the first is I do all the editing in Camtasia, mm -hmm. and they have no interface for that. At least they didn't. I'm using an old version of Camtasia. I don't think the new one has it either. The closest it could come is there's a project file, and that is an XML file. And I've looked through it, and it seems mostly predictable. So in theory, somebody smarter than me could, outside of Camtasia, do some of it, but still, like, there's the edit. I have to pull the, the beginning of the show off and the end of the show off and some of those things that I don't know that I could script. But I could script farther into that. There's also no scripting interface for rendering things out. So I can't do that that I know of. Gotcha. Um, that, go ahead. I was going to say, that's one of the tough things, you know, as a guy who edits lots of Camtasia videos also, is there's a lot of repetitive things that I go and do, and there's just not... A solid. I'm like, I know that the program should know how to like account for this or that, and it, and it just it can't. And yeah. now, one of the things I did do, and I'm sure you've already done it, but just maybe if other people are out there thinking about it, uh, one of the things I did was okay, I had a bunch of pieces I like to bolt on the end and then bolt in the middle, and it used to be separate pieces I'd kind of have to pull in and do. What yep. I finally figured out was I took those separate pieces and I produced them into a video. So I just pull in a video and drop it at the end, and it gets all of the pieces laid out for me. So, Yeah, I did something similar. I couldn't do the video bit, but the beginning is the same, and I have to have to manually type in you know the name and the date and all that. But I have a project that has all of those pieces in it, has it laid out in the timeline and all yep. that. And then when I produce the next podcast, I've got a PowerShell commandlet, new TK podcast, and I give it the title and all of that. It copies that project, copies it into a new folder, renames the files for the project files, all that. So then I just open that up, and it's already got all that stuff at the beginning, and I just have to drive the week's video in. And Good job. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> yep. So that, that part I don't know of a great way to automate, but I'm also not using a new version of Camtasia because they took out the MP3 rendering, which is obviously an important thing for podcasts. I think I saw they were either they were either putting it back or they have put it back. Okay, we'll check that. And, and there are ways to do this in the command line, I, and I've done that before. But that is one of the things I didn't want to add to the process. And then the other piece that could be scripted by somebody smarter than me but is not 
is I create the, there's two XML files for the feeds. There's an XML file for the audio and for the video version of the RSS feed. Mm -hmm. I can create the individual items in PowerShell. What I have not been able to do successfully is integrate that into the full RSS file for the full feed. So I run my things, I render up my audio, my video, it automatically uploads them to the website and all of that and creates those XML files. And then I end up going into Notepad++ and highlighting the part for the MP3, copy, paste it in the RSS. That is obviously something that could be scripted, but my XML skills in PowerShell are just terrible. That's fair. That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how often to this day, you know, the opening something up in Notepad and just doing it real quick is still the answer that you and I uh, defer to for things. Uh, yeah, I would... I would, uh, I would love to automate that part. Yeah, but then that, let's talk. Oh, good. Oh no, go, yeah, I'm good. Go ahead. Say, let's talk about some other, some less, uh, less woeful things. What's been going on in the world of tech? There's been a bunch of things. Um, one of the things that you didn't get to talk about last week that you had on the agenda was uh, some of your curated Power Apps content. Oh, fancy! You want to talk about that first? I feel so honored. Well, I feel bad we didn't get to talk about it last week, and you, you had it in there. Well, you're kind. Um, so one of the things that has come up over time, uh, someone that's in the chat room right now has yelled at me on multiple occasions about it, is you know the YouTube channel where I've got millions and millions of Power Apps videos and other stuff, uh, but mostly the Power Apps stuff. Shut up. Um, there's ads, right? I mean, there's just no two ways around it. I, I put ads on the videos. Um, and one of the reasons for that is it increases the viewership. I, I realize that YouTube has vehemently said that is not the case, but I can show you the day I turned on ads, and I can show you this giant spike and this incredible climb I've continued on ever since then. So it, it's, a, it's a solid way to encourage YouTube to share your content, which gets more people seeing my Power Apps videos, which is, you know, it's the reason that's, I make the things. That's the purpose, yeah. But some people get really annoyed with all the ads. Um, so what I've done is I've now made a, what I call the curate, curate, curated. Curated. Thank you. Um, you should have seen me trying to type the word, let alone say the word. Um, oh. So in the curated um, offering now, you can pay a monthly subscription and you get all the YouTube videos ad free. Um, you also get, uh, so right, that's not really the whole point with the ad free, but because I saw the person in the chat room, I, I thought I'd start with the ad free. Um, yeah. But really what I've also done is I went and I've organized them. So I've grouped them by topics. Here's the, the Power Apps and SharePoint videos. Here's the Power Apps and SQL videos. Here are these pieces. I've made some of the apps that we build downloadable. I have made a bunch of the, um, the scripts that I use. Once again, so you can hop in there and copy and paste so instead of getting them out of the videos. I have also, I've added extra content. So for example, probably the most valuable thing that I have is I have a OneNote notebook where I keep a bunch of Power Apps, formulas and recipes and things like that. Sure. I have a bunch of SQL notes in there as well. So how to create a, a view, how to create a calculated text column versus a calculated number column, how to do a stored procedure. All of these crazy SQL things that I never knew that I had to learn to build apps I've now taken that entire dumping and put it in there as well. So that's the whole idea is it's just a, uh, a fun way for me to A, get rid of the ads, but B, um, to make it a lot easier for people who subscribe to it to find stuff because you can use search. You know, there's a lot of people that literally watch those video, watch the same video like 12 times. Sure. And, and they're you know, like, hey, I got to do this. And I, I'm like, all right, well, so here's a better offering. So that, that's been fun. There's also an extra version of that where you can have a monthly office hours chat with me. So I'm going to do a private uh, meeting with all the that month's subscribers and talk about the world of Power Apps, answer their questions, that type of stuff. Awesome. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it was something It was, it, you know, I mean, it probably took me 40 hours of work to grab all the videos off of YouTube and then to curate the content, add the downloads, and reorganize them. But I just kind of want to see what, uh, what comes of it, so... Yeah. So there's a link in the chat about that. If we didn't lose everybody when in talking about the production notes, you can go to toddclint.com slash podcast 444, and there'll be a link to all of this in there and all the other links that we talked about. Yeah. So I don't know. I, just, I, I can't wait to see, you know, do, do people like it, right? Because you struggle with, so you're like, people don't like ads. 
but they want the videos, but you know, I mean, some way, somehow you got to pay for it, right? It takes me hundreds and hundreds of hours to make all the content. Well, I know as much time as you spend when I'm trying to chat with you and you're like, oh, I can't chat. I got to make a video that that is so many hours a week. So I can only assume that it takes that much time and you're not just blowing me off. You're not making that up. Like, I got to go walk the dog, Chewy's. Uh... Well, let's go with 50 50. I mean, I do, I, <laughs> I do lie to you sometimes, but, uh, but, yeah, it's 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 good. So, yeah. And, that, and that's an interesting thing. And we're going to talk, I think, maybe even the next topic. Nope. Yeah, it is the next topic. Um, that is a struggle that everybody that has content is struggling with. Yep. Uh, and, and it's kind of a twofold thing. The internet for 20 years, everything was free. And that's still in our consciousness. We expect every video on the internet to be free. We don't want to you know, pay for news articles or videos or whatever. But it does take time and money. And that free way, you know, free, free lunch is going away for some things. So getting people okay with the idea of paying for content is tough. The other thing is different people want to pay for content different ways. So some people are happy to pay for it with their time with ads, and that's okay for them. Some people not. So they would rather just pay for money. And so figuring out the balance between all of those, because it can't be one or the other, or can't be, it can't all just be one or the other. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a tough thing. And the other thing is, even if you solve it for today, Wednesday, October 30th, the tides are always going to be shifting. So a year from now, the landscape going to be different. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, and I thought so. And I saw, you know, you were having a conversation with someone around this whole idea of um, being able to modify the content as we consume it as well, right? So, like, yeah. watching podcasts and fast forward and stuff. And it was interesting to see some of the, the pas passion. Uh, so, some people had real strong feelings about what you should and shouldn't be able to do with videos and this type of stuff. So. Well, yeah, so that's curious. So I'll, I'll circle back to you on that as a, as a major content producer. But let me tell people what we're talking about. So there was a, a thread on Facebook with some of Shane's friends and I uh, about Netflix is betaing, or has in beta, I guess, a, a feature where you can watch a Netflix movie or TV show or whatever, but at an accelerated rate. So watch it at one and a half speed or something like that. And the audio won't be the chipmunk audio. So <laughs> podcast, uh, audio podcast, Players have had this for years. You could listen to this podcast in double speed, and Shane's voice does not get even higher. My <laughs> voice still stays, stays deep and sexy, but it takes less time. They end up clipping it, whatever. That's been up forever. Nobody really batted an eye at that. But then Netflix said, hey, we're going to try this with video. And a few people, including a couple friends of Shane and I's, lost their minds on it and just thought it was the most horrible thing ever. And How could Netflix do that? Of course, predictably, the movie industry freaked out. Uh, Judd Apatow wrote Netflix. He was one of the letters that I wrote. And he's like, you know, everybody in the movie industry, everybody in Hollywood already hates you, Netflix. They're going to hate you even harder if you do this. Just save everybody a lot of time and knock this off. And it was this really passionate thing. And for me, I, I for whatever reason, I was way less emotionally detached because it seemed like exactly the same thing to me. Why, you know, and they came back and they said, well, directors have this vision of this. And who are you to, you know, not look at that? I'm like, well, for one, who am I? I'm the guy paying their salary. I'm the customer. <laughs> so that and we historically have already had ways to do that. You know, when when directors shoot videos, they shoot them widescreen to be up on a big screen with this, you know, seven and nine channel surround sound and all that. But yet we can buy the DVD. And we can buy the DVD in pan and scan. Uh, we can buy it in a way that streams to our phone. We can buy it in all of these forms that we want to pay for that aren't what the director intended. They seem okay with that. I mean, there's whole industries built around that. And what it comes down to with me is I think, number one, it's just it's new and it's scary. So people are pushing back. And number two, the industry uh, hasn't found a way to monetize that yet. They can monetize DVDs. They can monetize streaming. They can't monetize you playing it faster yet. And so they kind of push back against that. And so there was this whole big discussion. And like Shane said, there were people that were passionately. And, I, and my thing back to them was um, I don't listen to podcasts at fast speeds. For whatever reason, my ear picks up the, the, the clipping and it's really distracting for me. I've never listened to a podcast at anything greater than 100 or the one, you know, one X. But in no way, shape or form would I want to push that on anybody else. And say, podcasting apps shouldn't do this. This is horrible. Nobody should listen to them like that. I don't care. As long as I can listen to it the way I want to listen to it, who gives a damn? And I feel the same way about Netflix. But some people were not that way. So as a content producer, what's your take? I, I'm 100% agree with you, right? I, 
Watch it the way you want. I've created the content. That was my job. My, my job in this whole thing was to make the content, whether you watch it at half speed, triple speed, if you pause it every few seconds, if you watch the Smurfs in between you know, outtakes. Why is this my, why would I be able to set this to, you know? And, and one of the people got all preachy, well, you know, yeah, back to the whole, the director has a vision and they want to, they want you to experience and feel it, you know, it's art. And so that's why you can't mo change movies. You can change podcasts because apparently podcasts aren't art, but movies are art. And it just, it just wasn't hitting it for me. You know, and I would also push back on Hollywood, you know, the whole, they can't, I mean, because you're exactly right, they haven't figured out how to monetize it, so that's why they're mad. But in reality, they are, right? Because now, if you've cut the time that it takes me to watch a movie in half or by 20%, I can watch 20% more movies. You right. charge every time I watch a different movie. So you, Hollywood is winning by the ability for me to consume content faster. More content, yeah. So... I no, I, I once again I refused to argue on the internet, so I didn't chime into the thread in any way. But I 100% agreed with what you had stated around Hollywood hadn't figured out how to monetize it, and then this idea that it was changing their you know hundreds of people went into making this piece of art. So so I can't fast forward blockbusters, but can I fast forward? I sing a one man show if a one man person, but they would say that's more artistic, right? Where they have the fin and all that. But, but yeah. hundreds of people didn't do it. That one's okay. I, I'm not. Yeah, that's this. no, no. And and there weren't hundreds of artists involved. There was one or two artists, and then a gaffer and a best boy and a foley artist. They, you know, they're just they're worker bees. They don't the, care. The caterer, yeah, the caterer. Oh my god, yep. Star Wars has been fast forwarded. My my tuna salad does not taste the same anymore. Yeah, uh, so I'm <laughs> talking about all that. Uh, because of Marvel and all that, my wife and I sit through the credits at movies a lot, and I always get offended when they roll the accountants in there. Like, the caterers, the best boys, the grips, the accountants, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> my wife's an accountant, which is why that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, this is ridiculous. Yeah, so Devin said, a uh, guy periscoped about this and said, movies aren't good anymore. Derivatives, so we should be able to fast forward. Exactly. I, I yeah. I'm on board. I'm, I yeah I, so but I it's good to hear that as a content producer you are also on board with them uh, doing consuming your art however they want to whatever's best for them yeah you know which brings me to like so like a slightly related topic um, but one of the things that you know I think that the power platform community as a whole is going to struggle with already kind of struggling but it's not very obvious is you know this whole idea that. So if I make a video on how to do convert to PDF, right? Very popular topic. Yep. And I put that out in the world. You know, th there's this like fear of A, well, they're like, oh, so Shane's covered it. So I should never cover that topic, which is wrong. Yep. I, I suffer from that myself. Yep. But then there's the other side is they go into this whole idea. They're like, oh, I can't do that because Shane did it. And he'll be mad at me because I'm stealing his content or, or me getting mad at people. Like, what do you mean that? Tommy made a video about PDFs. That is my, I, that's my technique, right? And I, this is another one of those things that I think the world's got to kind of start to wrap their head around because we had this problem with blogging back in the day where people would cut and paste yeah. someone's blog. That's yeah. bad. Yep. But if you read someone's blog post about how to do something and you want to take what they taught you and go apply it differently, even if it's only slightly differently, you want to regurgitate it, but you make your own version. You didn't cut paste. You made your own version of that same content that is 100% allowed. And as, and as a content creator, that does not bother me in the least if you say, oh, Shane did this. Well, he should have done this differently. I'm going to go recreate his whole video, but do this one step differently because it would be better. That's why I made the content to begin with. So I, I, I don't know. I, I see this set of holy wars coming really soon as well with people. Just this idea that you know us content creators are special and I made the content to be consumed this artist. way. So I don't know. I can tell you that I subscribe to both of the views that you just uh, said sucked. I absolutely have had blog posts that I have mostly written up and then went out and found somebody that had a very similar blog post. I went, ah, you know, whoever covered it. I've talked myself out of that more times than I'm, I care to admit. I also get a little frustrated when I have a blog post about something and then I see somebody else has a blog post about the same thing. <laughs> but I will tell you, I completely agree with you and both of my views, I need to evolve past that. Um, and I think it's, I can, oh, sorry. 
But I can see how people fall for that. Yeah, and I and I totally feel like you're justified being sad or disappointed that someone else covered the same topic, right? Because that's probably less views that you're going to get. Yeah, it's okay to feel that way, but it's different if you go and yell at that person for oh, yeah. covering the topic, right? Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's something we're going to see at some point the world freak out a little bit about, you know, especially like we have customers within the power app space that like, you know, sign this IP agreement that we own all of the code and stuff. I'm like, that's, that's, that's not how power apps works. It, you don't yeah. own nothing. I took a bunch of formulas that I've written 12 times for other people and I've, you know, bolted them together in a new or similar way for you. You own your app. God yeah. bless you. But you do not own the IP of, you know, for all these users send an email. Yeah. Those are old technology boilerplate uh, legal agreements. Yeah. So I, so I don't know. And I just, I guess it would just be a reminder to all of you, and not that anyone's still listening at this point, they've gotten bored with me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I've literally like went and helped probably a dozen of the content creators that are doing the YouTube content today get started, right? You, The whole purpose of doing this stuff is to help the ecosystem grow, right? The whole pie gets bigger, then, you know, it's a win for me. So I'm not, I don't believe in these people that are like, oh yeah, you know, why would I help someone else get started making YouTube videos that'll compete with my YouTube videos? The heck with it. It makes power apps as a whole bigger, better. So I've literally helped my quote unquote competition for, you know, content. I've helped them, you know, I helped another uh, training company get started, right? Because it was the right thing to do. It makes the pie bigger. So yeah. It's a hard perspective to have, but I'm just so anti-Hollywood and their whole, you know, protectionism, right? I'm about, let's make some content, let's get it out in people's hands, and let's see where it goes. Yep, I agree. I agree. On the heels of that, I got some, I saw some interesting news uh, a couple days ago that Sony is killing their PS View uh, product, and that was one of the streaming services that you and I use. You still use it. I still uh, am a customer, yes. <laughs> yeah, so you should have seen the look on Shane's face when he was looking at the notes for the first time. He was like, what? They're killing PS View? Um, so they've got a press release out about that. That's interesting, and I'm curious. What do you think that means for the landscape of streaming services? Yeah, I mean, it can't be good, right? I, I, I'm assuming what happened, because I think in PlayStation's note, they said that basically the, you know, the hockey stick hadn't hockey sticked enough for them. You know, it was a, it was yeah. a slow buildup of customers instead of they were hoping just to instantly own 100% of the market, right, which is what every boardroom projection ever looks like. Yeah, and it's interesting uh, because, right, and I don't have this in the show notes, but I also saw a, an article this week about how AT&T continues to hemorrhage DirecTV subscribers. So where are all these people going if they're, you know, canceling direct TV and cable in record numbers? Yeah. I, I, my, so my guess, I mean, they didn't even imply it in there, but my guess is that YouTube TV is just destroying them. Yeah. Well, and that's, so that's, that's an interesting thing because I switched over to YouTube TV <laughs> several months ago. Yep. I was a little irritated with some PS View things for the service, but mostly did it because they lost one of the local channels that I watch a lot. And... I prefer YouTube TV way more than PS View. And it is just so many things. Uh, the apps are better all the way around. The web interface is better all the way around. And it's just a much better experience. I, Sony, for PS View, it, it felt like Sony had their gaming platform that they have been doing for, what, a decade and a half now? And they kind of bolted this video streaming thing on top of it. Like, it was really difficult for me to figure out which package I had and all that, because I'm in this PlayStation network, and it's all about buying games. And, oh, if you can find this one link over here. Uh, but YouTube TV, it's very obvious what I'm paying for. And let's be honest, YouTube does video streaming better than anybody. Like, Netflix is probably a close second, if not tied for first. But YouTube gets streaming video. They get how to do it from a technology standpoint. They get the interface. It's a way better experience. Yeah, and that's, I think, um, I think that's probably the big part here is that YouTube, if I had to guess, Google has thrown the kitchen sink at this, right? They're like, you guys have unlimited money to make YouTube TV the most successful, greatest platform on the planet. And to your point, Sony over there, who also has a lot of money, was like, yep. 
eh, you fall in the PlayStation budget. Go fight about, you know, the, with the guys that are doing Call of Duty to see how much money you can have uh, to, to make your platform. And I'm guessing it's just an, an economics type of thing, right? Because then you get into, like, Sling. Well, Sling is meh at best, right? But they're a little small company. It's just self-contained. They don't have the resources to fight. Oh, they're owned by you. Dish Network. So they're a little bit, a little bigger company than they used to be. Well, that's, that's good to know. But I mean, I, last time I looked at their platform, I was just like, oh, this is like a high schooler made uh, yeah, not streaming sure, no. service. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, and ultimately as consumers, this is probably all terrible, right? That PlayStation's getting out of the game. I feel like they were, or Sony, because I feel like they were the ones that could at least keep Google and YouTube honest for a while. Um, yeah. I think in a perfect world for us, the consumer, Netflix would buy View from Sony and Netflix, to your point, right, mm. that they're a really good streamer as well. So if Netflix yeah. could pull that in and I mean, that'd be a tempting package. Could I pay for Netflix, right? Could, if I could strap onto my Netflix account $40 a month for the TV and then it was all in one app, I'm interested in this conversation, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. That that does blur the lines a lot between the Netflix content um, so Kevin in the chat room says, I have no interest in YouTube TV because it's just network TV stations and Google is all about advertising. It's not just network stations. It's all of the other ones as well. I mean, we watch all of the other uh, cable channels. The advertising as of today and as of the last few months has not been bad. There are not interstitial. There are not YouTube or Google specific ads in everything anywhere that I've seen. And the ads that come from the shows that we watch that is dictated by the channel, by the by the provider. So, uh, like, there's an ABC show. We always watch America's Funniest Home Videos. The video itself is an hour. I can absolutely fast-forward through the commercials. Uh, but we watch other shows on CBS, like Survivor. Those, we can't fast-forward through the commercials. But that is not a YouTube thing. That is a CBS thing or whoever is licensing that. Because it was the same on View. I assume it's the same on Hulu and all those other ones. Um but I, I like your, so that one of the things that's been always interesting to me is like YouTube TV has um, on demand, you know, watching of shows and it has DVR where you pick which shows you DVR. And I, for the life of me, can't tell the difference between that from a functionality standpoint. So if I go and to the on demand and look for last week's AFV, how is that different from me going into my DVR and picking last week's AFV? It seems like the same thing. So for Netflix, they've already got a you know pantheon of TV shows. So just wedging this in so you can watch this week's Modern Family. Oh, and here you can go back and watch the last 12 seasons of Modern Family. I like how that blurs the line as to, you know. Yeah, it'd be interesting. And, and Hulu's kind of doing some of that. Um, so right now we're actually uh, Hulu Premium subscribers. Or I think it's what, we're, or a paid Hulu plan that uh, gets us the commercial free. And so where we've enjoyed it, is back to your point with PlayStation View. If we DVR Mass Singer, which is currently the the family favorite, yep. um, when we replay it, we still have to watch the commercials. Even if it's DVR, we can't fast forward the commercials with PlayStation View. Whereas when we switch over to Hulu, we can't. Or no, the Hulu Premium doesn't even have the commercials. They've they've stripped them out for us, so it just plays. Yeah. And so. For better or for worse, I mean, it's costing us an extra eleven dollars a month. I think I've been been very happy with our Hulu subscription. Yeah, and that was part of the reason months ago when View lost our local CBS station, the local stuff. Why I was so tempted to just jump ship and go to to YouTube TV because there's no c contracts or no hardware. So I tried YouTube TV for the free trial for two weeks. It was fine. Killed PS View. There was no phone call. I just went to the website. I canceled. And I knew that if I regretted the decision, three days later, I could go back in and sign right back up and not lose anything. It was uh, it was awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious how that shakes out if, if YouTube TV does end up becoming more monopolistic and raising their prices and all that. I, I assume that happens. But, you know, I guess the other big advantage that YouTube TV has that I think a lot of people discount or at least... I don't think it's readily obvious, but that's where the kids are, right? The kids are on YouTube today. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so when they're like, hey, I'm an adult now, you know, I want to I want to have, you know, I'm in my apartment. I need to have my own TV. Like they, I'm guessing most of them literally don't even bat an eye. They just immediately sign up for YouTube, YouTube TV 
because that's, you know, mommy and daddy aren't paying for cable anymore. I got to have something. And they don't even, under, they probably don't even know they have PlayStation View and Sling and Direct TV now out there. They're like, but they live in a YouTube centric world. So God bless you two. I think it's genius of them to just give these people a nice way to transition into adulthood by paying for some TV. Yeah, I would say that might be on the early end of that. I've got some 20 something nieces and nephews. They might not even know that YouTube TV exists. They are all about Netflix for TV. That is all that they like. They don't even think about anything else. It's just Netflix. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but, but to your point, YouTube might be planting the seeds for that, like with my kids. And so in 10 years, when my kids are moving out, um, <laughs> they might, you know, take whatever that service is. Yeah. I, um, so no, it's, I, I just, it's a worth reminding people if you're not thinking about this way, but you know, there's a large percentage of the population that no longer go to google.com to do their internet searches. They, they start their, their day, they start their searches in YouTube. They're, there's a lot of a lot of those young kids. They, YouTube is the center of their universe. So yeah. one of the big reasons I made the jump to making all my content over there. It's it's where the the new the learners are. So that was why I jumped over there so early. And so just a reminder to all of you, if you're thinking about how do I get my message out or how do I do this or that, if you're trying to hit the the earlier ones, it's uh, it's YouTube. Yeah. Now, one bad side about all of this, and, and we've experienced this before with DirecTV and Dish and our local cable companies and all that, is every provider has to have a contract with every content producer. Yep. And those contracts expire. And every time they expire, there is a fight about who gets paid what and channels get taken off. That doesn't go away with streaming services. That is, and, But it's not new with streaming services either. And so when you and I are talking before the show – you getting rid of PS View and moving to something else like YouTube TV hmm. has one significant problem. Uh, would you like to tell the folks what that problem is and what the potential solution is? My wife is obsessed with the Hallmark movie channel or the Hallmark channel so she can watch Christmas movies year round. I can confirm that. That is not some contrived point that we put to talk about this. That is a true story. No. Nope. Yeah. When, when I started the quest, and if you go back and watch the episodes where we were talking about this, I, what two years ago now? Two years ago, yeah. it was the, literally the first thing when I was asking her. Okay, what are your must-haves? She only had one, and it was the Hallmark Channel. Guess what channel has not made it into the YouTube TV catalog? I'm gonna guess the Hallmark Channel. And you would guess right. So we are. Um, I, it's gonna be. It's gonna be real sad when I have to go up there at lunch today and tell her that PlayStation View is going away in January, and uh, we will not have the Hallmark Channel. She'll get this season. She can get her fix of, you know, Christmas of uh, 2019. That'll be it. Yeah. So, now, go ahead. I was going to say, so we were doing some research ahead of time because Todd realized very quickly what a terrible situation he'd put me in by telling me this information. <laughs> and it was real cute. Todd's like, oh, well, you only have to, you know, worry about it like two months a year. I'm like, ha! Ah! No, thank you. I uh, did underestimate that. That's true, yeah. But so it turns out there are uh, Hallmark has kind of their own offering Hallmark Hallmark movies now, um, so we're gonna have to go do some investigation and figure out if uh, that will service all of her Christmas movie needs. You know, there's world premieres of these Christmas movies, and by God, she is not gonna miss those. So I don't no. know. It'd be interesting. Yeah. So this is one of these things. I don't know what the numbers are right now, but when I first cut the cord two years ago, two and a half years ago we immediately started saving $100 a month, Me too. which more than covered the additional Roku boxes that we ended up buying and all that. And we continue to save that $100 a month uh, now. But what we're finding is little pockets like this. So for the average person, a uh, little sparky uh, notwithstanding, Hallmark Channel doesn't show up on YouTube TV, but I can go out and I can buy Hallmark movies now. It's five bucks a month. If I buy it for a year, six bucks a month. And I can have that channel only for three months and just get rid of it. You couldn't do that with DirecTV or any of those kind of things. And those services are also popping up. So HBO, you can do that now. So when Game of Thrones fires up, you can have that for three months and then spin it down. Um, so we've done that for some shows. My wife likes a show on Stars. So when that shows up, we subscribe to stars for, stars for a few months, uh, spin that down, and that is flexibility we didn't have before. So that's something else to look at. But I guess the thing is, when you stream, it's a little more work, but for a little bit of time, 
you can save a hundred dollars a month and get a whole bunch of other features. So a little yeah. bit of a trade. And then it, and it makes so much more sense too, right? I mean, it used to be in my cable subscription, you know, everyone in the city that was using that subscription was subsidizing Nicola's need to watch the Hallmark channel. Yeah. Right. Cause everybody was paying 10 cents on their bill for the Hallmark channel. So yeah. now, Hey, we want the Hallmark channel. We pay for the whole Hallmark channel. We get the Hallmark channel, but my neighbors who've never watched a Hallmark movie in their life do not have to pay for it. So it's a better system. Yeah, I agree. So, and I guess we would be remiss if we didn't mention that Disney Plus, their streaming service is starting here in a couple of weeks. That's going to be all the Marvel stuff and the Star Wars stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That new, uh, the new Mandalorian uh, mm -hmm, series. Mm -hmm. The Mandalorian, yep. I, 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 I want to watch it. I will be curious to see if Disney Plus, they, they might bring the goods. They might make that a must-have streaming service as well. Yeah. We'll see. They, I, they've got the catalog. They absolutely, between the, the Disney movies and Star Wars and Marvel, they have a compelling offering. So, well, I'll wait to see. But that's the great thing. If I don't sign up right away, I'll sign up two months later and still watch all the same stuff. It's... Yep. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't. I, I was watching a, you know, preview for the the Mandalorian. I was like, I, 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 I want to see that. I, I, I actually have not watched the preview for the Mandalorian to avoid that exact thing. Like I know, so for the longest time, so one of my uh, weaknesses, I have many as a human. Uh, Shane can attest. Uh, but one of them is M and M's. Another one of them is caramel. And whenever several years ago, when they put out caramel M and M's. It was like two of my favorite things had gotten married, and, and but I did not have any caramel M&Ms for fear of the addiction that would soon follow. I avoided them for years, and then you and I were speaking somewhere. Lori normally goes out and gets us M&Ms and brings them. She went out and got caramel M&Ms, and it was the only food that I had. And I had, the, the, it, it touched my lips, the, the, the thing, that, and I've been addicted to caramel M&Ms ever since. And so that... <laughs> I, I know my weaknesses, so I've, I've avoided the Mandalorian for that exact uh, reason. Yeah, that's a hundred percent a true story, folks. I was there for all of it. That, that whole story exactly <laughs> happened as he just told it. Like, like I've never seen anybody shoot heroin and and see that look, that glaze that goes over their face when it hits their bloodstream. But I can only assume that's what my face looked like when I put that first caramel M&M in my mouth. And I went, oh, it just kind of melted my seat. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. and what's interesting, so I've seen the Mandalorian trailers. It wasn't on purpose. They just, they showed up, and I went, mm, you know. Because the other problem I have is, so the, the Star Wars game I play, is, I'm, uh, I'm not like a super Star Wars nerd. I don't have Star Wars stuff over my house or that type of thing. But I have a pretty solid catalog of not only the characters from the movies you've seen, but the characters from the backstories, the, the later stories, the side stories. The cartoons, yep. I know... Hundreds and hundreds of... The Timothy Zahn books, all that, yeah. Yes. And so, watching The Mandalorian to the uneducated, like, oh, there's just a random person over there. There's a random robot shooting. I'm like, ooh, IG-88. IG-88's in there shooting behind his back. Why, why is he... Right? And immediately, even watching the Solo movie, they, they drop some character names in there that you've never heard of that I'm like, is Zam going to show up? Where's Boss? All right, it was... It's so... So anyway, that's going to be the challenge. I think they're doing a good job of oh, yeah. weaving those pieces in. But on the flip side, I have not watched any of the trailers for the new movie coming out in December because no, I, I hate that those things like set me up to think one way or sometimes people say, oh, there's a spoiler in there. I'm like, I didn't watch them for the last one. I'm not going to watch the trailers for this one. I, I know I want to see it. Why watch a trailer that shows me 30 seconds of the movie? Yeah, I watched the first one. I hated Solo. And I hated uh, the last Star Wars movie immensely. Like it was a, a one-two punch right in the uh, right in the gut. And so I'm I will absolutely see uh, the Rise of Skywalker. I, I can't even begin to convince myself that I won't. <laughs> but I will hate myself for it because I hated the last two movies so much. And so okay, and so I understand why you hated Solo. I, I liked Solo, but I but I watched Solo as as an action movie, not as a Star Wars movie. So that helped. Um, yeah, yeah, but, that would help. But what, um, what did you hate so much? I don't know how we've never talked about this. What did you hate so much about the, the last uh, real movie? Episode uh, eight? It's been, what, you know, whatever, a year or a year and a half, two years, whenever it came yeah. out since I've seen it. Um, it didn't feel right. It didn't, so I, I can't remember the, the, the director, Rian, whoever, 
Um, like, I just don't like the feel of his movies. I didn't like the thing at the end with the kid with the broom. Like, they, it, it's like they were... And I, I guess the other thing is I recognize I'm not the target audience for Star Wars movies anymore. I'm I'm, I'm too old for that. Uh, but, yeah. But, like, the, the whole casino scene seemed kind of cheesy for a Star Wars movie. And there was just... I didn't like how they handled Luke in the Star Wars movie. There was just a lot of it that offended me. I, yeah, I didn't like it. Fair. I'd have to go back and watch it again to get the full list of grievances, but. No, and I, would, I wouldn't put you through that. I just, uh, <laughs> I was just curious if you were just like, you know, well, when he does the force ghost thing, I just, I, I, I was just done, right? I didn't know if you had like, well, like a, just a major moment, but it, it just sounds like overall you didn't like it. Yeah. The kid with the broom at the end, that was a major moment. And that was, and that's one of those things, like I'm, I'm keenly aware of it. I think we talked about it last week or the week before. The last part of any event, if uh, colors predominantly how you view the entire event. So I might have thought the movie was not so bad until that horrible scene at the end of the kid at the broom. And then I'm like, I'm out of here. This whole thing was terrible. Uh, so fascinating. Yeah, yeah. But I'll I'll see it. Um, well, we probably have time for one quick, or maybe not. If we can handle any of the other ones quickly uh, before we we let these people these fine people go. Um, oh, wait, so we could do D real quick since that follows yeah. the topic, I guess. Um, I'm guessing most of you, unless you live under a rock, heard that over the past weekend, Microsoft uh, was awarded a $10 billion, with a B. Uh, the, three, the Three Comma Club. The Three Comma Club, very well played. Um, <laughs> for the... Uh, the DOD's Azure or cloud footprint, basically, right? The DOD's like, hey, what are we going to do for the cloud? And so they called it the Azure Jedi thing, as it says in Todd's notes. Uh, but yeah, so Microsoft beat AWS out for that. Uh, so a nice little $10 billion uh, uptick. I'm hoping, guessing it's going to help my stock price a little bit as well. So good job, Microsoft, on winning that thing. That was huge. I, and obviously, a $10 billion contract with the U.S. federal government is huge. I yeah, but that is huge. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see what that looks like as it full it unfolds. I mean, I, I've got to believe at $10 billion, their plan is to build them their own data center. And, you know, so it would be the standard Azure, but it would just be their own. But then knowing other things about how the DOD does their network, is it more than one? It would have to be. Yeah. All right. So do you end up with seven different data centers? Or, I mean, at least, yeah, I don't, I don't, it'd be one, one giant data center with seven sections. Um, yep. Yeah, and I think the big problem, I mean, I'm glad the government figured out, I'm shocked the government figured out, but, you know, AWS was first to the cloud, you know, and they got a real big market share, and Microsoft's been second, but Microsoft keeps taking away from them, and I think one of the challenges that AWS has got to be running into is those... All those early adopters wrote their code and their, you know, these highly important, highly scalable solutions to work the way that the code base was written then. And they're just having a hard time evolving their services into more modern ways of doing things because it would just destroy everything else. You know, the whole key base system that they use and such. And so I, I'm not, I'm not surprised Microsoft won. I from what I know of the two platforms, Microsoft should have won, but um, yeah, just interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. I was watching a, a podcast about something completely unrelated uh, a couple of days ago, but he was talk the guy was talking about the fallacy of the innovator's advantage. That you know, if you get there first, it's a big advantage, and in reality, especially in tech things like that, it's really not because you you drop something like AWS on the unsuspecting public, and they're like, "What the hell? Put our stuff in the? Are you crazy?" And so Amazon spends all the money and time up front convincing people it's a good idea. People like Google and Microsoft sit back and kind of watch and see how it unfolds, and then they hit second and have a better field to play on. Yeah, I, and, it's, and it's fun. for uh, Microsoft's got to love it, right? One of the biggest challenges we've had over the years is Windows is so old, right? Yeah. I mean, half the bloat and crap that is in my Windows 10 machine here is so that some stupid 16-bit app can still call some DLL that's been calling since 1997. Yep. And so, yeah, trying to hold on to it, whereas Apple's is like, screw you, we're rolling out a new OS, you know, we don't care about your legacy stuff. 
and they pulled it off. And, yeah, <laughs> they, they got away with it. They yep. did. They absolutely did. But that's where you know when people are like, "Oh, Windows sucks." Well, no, Windows just has to serve more than just you. Whereas Apple, for better or for worse, you know, in the personal space especially, has gotten away from this model of the, the laptop does what the laptop does. Your program doesn't work. Get a new program, right? I mean, Microsoft could never do that. The, the world would stop functioning if Microsoft said, you know what? We're turning off every version of Windows before Windows 10 tomorrow, and we've removed all the backwards compatibility out of Windows. Like, literally, the world would stop moving that moment. Just stop spinning on its axis and we'd all fall down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm assuming the machine that makes the, the, the planet go in circles is absolutely ran on a Windows XP box. Yep. But I mean, our financial markets are ran on that, our healthcare is ran on that, the government's on that, our defense is on that, every, right? They're all running these old Windows XP machines that are still processing some 16-bit DLL every second to keep something going. And that's the reason Microsoft has such a hard time getting Windows to be what everyone wants it to be. So I think AWS is having the same problem. AWS is cloud. If they said, you know what, we're turning off all those legacy services that make all the bloat, we're getting rid of that weird authentication structure thing that we use that doesn't make any sense to outsiders. We're turning all that off to only do it the new, hot, fresh, cool way. The internet would stop. Yeah. I couldn't go to Amazon and buy stuff. That'd be really bad. Don't ever say that again. I, my bad, my bad. <laughs> bleep, that, bleep that out in the recording, please. No, I'm taking that out. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, we're coming down on uh, the top of the hour. I don't know if you've got any speaking things coming up. I'm going to be at Ignite next week, and I will get this out before I go to Ignite. So if you're going to be at Ignite, shoot me a message if you want to get together. And then November 21st, I'm going to be doing a webinar for the folks at Syskit on offboarding people. Oh, so that's I going like to be it. a fun one. And then the week after next, I'm going to be in Slovenia at the Thrive Conference. So if you're going to be over there, stop by and say hi. Man, you got a full schedule. My schedule is I'm going to sit here in my basement and make YouTube videos. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's worked out well for you. Wouldn't change a thing. So thanks, everybody. Chat room, we're going to stick around for a bit. At least I am. Uh, we will. I will not be here next week or the week after. I don't know if Shane's going to do these on his own or not. We haven't chatted about that. I just realized I'm going to be gone. Yeah, I don't know. We'll so, figure that out. We'll talk about that after the show. We'll see, but I'll let you guys know after that. I'll see you guys in three weeks. Talk to you later. Bye.